You okay? Let me see your nose. Henry, you're super cute. You're so cute. <laughs> What's going on guys? My name is Bart Komar and this is RuPaul. And if you're anything like our family, you decided to get chickens, you built a coop. Okay. <laughs> And now you want to give your chickens a place where they can roam, be free, be happy by building a predator-proof chicken run. So today I'm going to show you how to build one of these, keeping in mind the three threats that I think are vital to keep these guys safe. And that's the aerial threat, the direct threat, and the underground threat, right? Yeah. RuPaul, you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so this is going to be a freestanding chicken run. It's not anchored to anything in the ground and will only be screwed together at the corners. I do, however, have a four foot fence on two sides of the coop that I'm gonna use to help level everything out, but it can totally be just a freestanding chicken run if you don't have anything to attach it to. The size of this run is 20 by 20 feet and each wall section that I'm laying out will be 10 foot by seven foot high. And for the bottom plate of each wall, I need to use ground contact lumber, but my local hardware store didn't have any in stock, but they did have a two by eight by 10. So I ripped them down the middle and I can use them instead of a two by four as my bottom plate. Now, because I didn't want this to have two by fours every 16 feet and look like a framing wall, I decided to place studs in the middle of each 10 foot section wall, but that means that I have to put a stretcher down the middle of it using a dado joint. And this is gonna give me more rigidity and keep the studs from twisting over time. And if you're interested in building a chicken coop like mine, I do have plans for Coop de Villa available in the description below, or you can head over to comarproject.com and visit the Comar store. You can download them from there. After getting my first wall laid out, I screwed it together using three inch exterior grade screws. Then I can insert the 10 foot long stretchers in the middle and use two and a half inch screws to secure those so they don't punch all the way through. With my first wall assembled, I grabbed my wire mesh and made sure that it was aligned with the bottom plate and started stapling it with galvanized staples every three to four inches. Now this is a 14 gauge two by four welded wire mesh. And you can pick this up in any hardware store in their garden section if you want. After stapling it to the bottom of the wall, I can cut it off with a grinding wheel and move it to the top and do the same exact thing. So that completes our first wall and then we can move on to our second one, which includes a door. All right, so I just asked, honey, how big of a door do we want? She goes, this big. It's a little excessive, don't you think? She goes, why don't you go measure the wheelbarrow? Our wheelbarrow is 28 inches, so 30 inch door. After cutting out the dado for the header as well, I can hammer it in and secure it into place. We went with a 30 inch by 72 inch door opening because we're a fairly short family, but you can definitely modify the size of this opening as needed. And you definitely wanna keep in mind that you're gonna be cleaning this coop out, right? So you wanna make sure that you can get a barrel or a trash can into that opening without any problems. This is Henry. He's pretty cool, a little stressed out right now because they don't come out of the coop. And uh, you ready for your gated community, Henry? Yeah? All right, give me like 10 minutes, bro. Oh, I found a knife. So I have my first two walls set up and they're gonna be the first 90 degree corner because if I were to put two walls together like so, it would do, you know, funky wonky things and we don't want that. So once we have our 90 degree corner established, screwed together, we can then work all the long walls off and it should be a fairly simple process. I always say that and you know, never turns out that way. All right, so my first order of business is going to be install a 4x4 right here to 
make up for the four by four that's over there. And we can pound it into place. Fix that there. Perfect, right there. Much better. Oh, Come out like so. Needs a little more. And this one's sitting obviously much higher than this wall because this wall is dug down in the ground. But I'm not going to be digging my entire yard to lower this into it. All I needed this was to be level. And now I'll be able to attach to this one. Hopefully, I don't have to do much adjustments on this run. It looks like I need to go down, <laughs> but not much. Now, all the walls except for the back ones, which are attached to the fence, are freestanding. If you want, you can drive stakes into the ground through the base plate like a railroad tie to keep them from shifting. But we're gonna be moving this coop in the next year or so, and I wanted to make sure that I could take the walls apart and move them as well. So I didn't put any stakes in the bottom, and it hasn't shifted since it was installed. Don't tell me you're gonna want a doghouse next, huh? Yeah. Scram. We're cooking now. With all four walls up, I can turn my attention to making the door, which is one inch smaller than the actual door open. I ripped the studs to two and a half inches wide for the door and kept the one inch strip to use later as a doorstop. I put it together the same way as the walls, except I added a cross brace in the middle of the door that is going to keep it from sagging over time. All right, so about a week ago, I put up this netting and I wouldn't even call it netting. It's basically string that's put together and you can't even see that it's up here. And my worry is that a hawk's gonna come in and swoop down and get caught in the netting. So I got some really thick backstop netting that we're gonna put up and hopefully that's gonna protect the babies from above. The only nylon backstop netting that I was able to find large enough was this rainbow colored one. And I thought that that was way too distracting to look at. So I decided that I'm gonna paint it with the same exact paint that I used on the walls. I initially tried to use a nylon dye, but that only muted the colors a little bit. But this acrylic paint did a great job. However, it did stiffen up a little bit after it dried and made the installation a little bit harder where I cut it to go around the tree. So pulling it and trying to zip tie it together is getting a little tricky so i just got a dowel and it's got a rounded edge and this will act as a finger so i can put it between both the nets it'll hold it and i can zip tie it together and obviously you guys see that i have a tree and how are we gonna go about that well i cut out a couple of pieces of wood from some old planking and it's like a clamp for a round tree All right, so we got our netting on and you would think that the aerial threat is gone, right? We've taken care of, there's no hawk swooping in trying to get cute little things like mac and cheese over here. However, that's not the case. A couple of months ago, we had a check-in by the name of Lady Gaga who was sitting right up against the fence and unfortunately, a hawk swooped in, went through the little squares in the fencing, grabbed her and did a ton of damage to her to the point where the vet said we had to put her down. There was, there was nothing that we can do. We know it was a hawk because there was a feather left behind and we have hawks all over the place. 
So to protect these little guys from such a threat that you really don't think can happen, we're gonna put an additional fencing on here with down below that is two feet high that is gonna prevent a hawk from kind of getting his claws up in there and getting a hold of my baby. Let's do that. Wherever I had easy access to my walls from the outside, I can just staple it onto the wall and use the bailing wire that it comes with to secure every couple of squares just to make sure it's secure and won't flap around in the wind. And these squares are half inch by half inch, so they're really, really small and will keep any predators away from the chickens when they're up close to the fence. All right, on the back side of the coop, I have my wire here that backs up to my neighbor's fence. And I don't have access to be nailing the mesh on the back side of my neighbor's fence. So what we're gonna do in here is basically just build out. I'm gonna run a two by four across here, and then we can staple our fencing on our side, which is actually gonna create some space in there so nothing can get from behind there because this spot right here is where the attack happened. So Lady Gaga was sitting right here, and a hawk came from behind there, somehow grabbed her, and did damage. So what we're gonna do is protect this area so that it never happens again. Gru, go back inside, come on. Get back inside, go back inside. Good girl, you too, Tony. Stay in the coop. All right, so now that we have our aerial and our direct threat taken care of, we got to do something about the underground because animals can dig underground to get these little guys, right? So we're going to go into the shop and make a deterrent for that. But first, let's take a minute to thank the sponsor of this build, Timberland Pro. If you're anything like me, you're on your feet for 10, 12 hours a day. And having the right footwear is key. So when Timberland Pro asked if I would try their new Cetra sneakers, I was all in. My mom always told me that you need two things in life, a good mattress and a good pair of shoes. Now I can go straight from the shop, pick up my kids from school, do some grocery shopping, and not look like I just came off a job site. Now, I'm a big fan of form and function, and these Cetras, they give me both. Not only do they look sweet, they also have a composite toe to protect my toesies. They have a variety of colors to choose from, from white to black, so whatever your style is, they got you covered. Whew, still got it. <laughs> so make sure you guys head over to TimberlandPro.com and grab yourself a pair of Cetras, whichever color you want. I'm gonna have the ones that I like linked in the description below, and while you're there, you can pick up one of these lined vests. These are absolutely awesome. I love them, I wear them every day. So thank you so much Timberland for supporting what I do. Let's get back to this build. For the underground threat, I'm gonna be making some anti-dig spikes out of half inch rebar that I can pound into the ground around the coop that will prevent any critters from digging underneath it. Now you can buy something that is very similar to this online that is made out of galvanized steel, but it's fairly expensive. For 80 linear feet of fencing that I have to protect, it would cost me around 500 bucks to do the entire area. But making my own out of this rebar, I was able to do it for 200 bucks. All right, so that pretty much takes care of these little guys from the outside. So we got the aerial threat covered, the direct threat, and underneath. There's a few other things that you can still do to make sure that nothing gets these cute little guys. You can also put in some predator deterrents. There's a ton of them out there on Amazon that you can put up. There's spikes that you can put on top of your chicken run or your chicken coop. I actually found a couple of LED lights that look like a predator. So they look like a little fox or a tiny little wolf, and the lights flash at night, kind of giving the impression there's a predator around. So I put one on each side of the chicken coop, and to be honest with you, 
I don't know if it helps, but we haven't had any issues at night. So I guess that means that they're working. But to make sure, Honey Bunny is making me put cameras inside the coop and on the outside because I think the biggest thing is knowing what your predators are. We live in the Midwest where we don't have wolves, we don't have bears, because a chicken run like this is not gonna stop a bear. Normally we're keeping these little guys away from coyotes, possums, uh, raccoons, raccoons, yeah. We have a lot of raccoons. But putting up cameras actually will give you an idea of what is coming around your coop. All right guys, so that's it. That's our predator protection that we have around Coop the Villa. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know in the comments section below. Um, this is our first flock, so we are also learning along the way, and I would love to know if you guys have any other ideas that we can you know, keep these guys safe, because they are part of the family, and we absolutely love them. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe and the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. We have a really, really cool project coming up demolishing the whole house i don't want you guys to miss that so hit that bell notification thank you for joining me on this experience we will see you guys next time slick your hair back a little ready you look like you got boogers hey tony hey tony 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 montana you take it easy you eh